Good morning all. Well, it's not a particularly good morning. The weather is atrocious. Let's have a quick look, actually. Yes, there's the neighbour's house. And uh, as you can see, it's raining. The winds died down a bit. We had that storm Chiara or whatever it's called come through. But the sky is typically grey. So this is my definitive final uh, transmitter and receiver setup. We've got Arduino Nanos for the transmitter and the receiver. Transmitter has a temperature and humidity sensor, SI7021, and a transceiver in transmit mode, which is the NRF 24L01+. Plus. The receiver has a Nano again. Another little um, transmitting tower, what I made, which has got these sort of crisscross of wires, so that it sits on D13, 12, 11, 10, 9. Now D13 on the Nano is actually on the other side, so I had to bring it over with a wire, but that's okay. So it's got the NRF 24L01+, Plus, and it's got an OLED. And on the OLED, you can see in nice two decimal place float styly, the humidity with a percent sign after it, and the temperature with a C after it. And what's important about this is how compacted I've got the code. And it is, it's tiny, it fits on one screen. So let's go and look at the code for the transmitter and the receiver. Should we start with the transmitter? So here's the transmitter sketch and it all fits on one screen. And in fact, I've come up with this thing where I'm never gonna have software that you have to scroll up and down because it's impossible to follow when you're watching a YouTube video. So if it um, if I can't fit on the screen downwards, I'm simply going to grow it out to the right. So you'll see several statements on one line like that. But uh, anyway, there's very little to this. And what's more, this sketch also includes the SI7021, or what I've called Simon stuff. So in fact, the radio stuff is even less. Let's go through what's needed for the radio transmitter it's simply include rf24.h now that's after you've installed the tmrh20 library um, set up your radio rf24 radio 9 and 10 are the uh, ce i think that one is and the csn pins i hope i got those the right way around we'll ignore simon for the moment you need to set up a pipe and it's uh, five bytes so i've got a an in uh, an unsigned integer here, 64 bits, that's actually 8 bytes, but it's big enough to hold the 5 bytes that you need. And I've just dumped a silly number in there, 55555. And we also need um, a packet, which is um, a, a single lump of data. So I've used um, an array of floats here, just two floats. Floats, of course, are 4 bytes each, so two floats means we've got 8 bytes, um, which I'm calling packet here. OK, so in setup, all we need is a radio begin and a radio open writing pipe. And that's where pipe comes in and sets the pipe address. Now, all the pipe address is, it's like if you've got a key fob for your car, it sends a code so that when you press open, it doesn't open all the cars in the vicinity. It just opens yours. So it's a unique address. So it means that you can have two of these systems set up. If they've got different unique addresses, they're not going to interfere with each other. Um, now I've got a comment in here where you, you can see that you can have some other things. You, there are other methods in this um, radio object. And one of them is enable ACK payload. And that's in there because I'm going to be doing that soon. And you can change things like the data rate. So you can set data rate to 250 uh, K bits per second. I think the default and a load of defaults are pulled in when you do the radio begin. I think the default is one megabit per second. So that's fine. Now, ignoring Simon, getting the temperature, humidity, and all that stuff, you then, in the loop, just do radio, write, and your um, data area, which for me is called packet. So radio, write, packet, size of packet. Size of packet, of course, is going to be eight, because my packet is an array of two floats, eight bytes. And that's it. That's it. There's really nothing to the transmitter. It's really simple. Shall we switch to the receiver? Here's the receiver. It's slightly longer. Um, but again, this includes the code for the OLED, all the U8X8 stuff. 
is OLED stuff. So once again, it's very simple. Include RF24, um, create your radio object with the, CS, uh, the CE and CSN pins. Again, you want the pipe. As long as this number's the same as on the transmitter sketch, it will work. Again, you want um, somewhere to dump the data after it's come in from the, the receiver. So I've set up a packet of two float variables. It's, an, it's a float array, a two element float array. So in setup for the receiver, radio begin, and then you do an op a radio open reading pipe, and you specify the pipe address. There's a one there, and I can't remember what it's for. It's probably important, so we'll leave it there. And then you have to do a radio start listening. Um, but that's all you need to do to get the receiver set up and ready. Then in the loop, it's simply this quite pretty little construction. If radio available, while radio available, radio read into your data area, which I've called packet, size of packet. And that's it. So that is the definitive transmitter sketch minimized down to the smallest size I could get. And I've still left in the SI7021 sensor stuff. And receiver sketch, again, distilled down to the minimum I could get away with. And I've still left in the OLED stuff. And it's still quite a small sketch. That's it. It's pretty tiny in terms of code. So that's it. If you want to put a little sensor, and I mean, you might want a different sensor. You might want to use, I don't know, like the BME 280 or 680, that thing that does all temperature, pressure, humidity, and levels of gas, which sounds like a lot of fun. Might look at that next. If you want to put a sensor somewhere and have a little transmitter, and you want to put a display somewhere and have a little receiver, then uh, this is about the minimum setup you can do. And the sketch you saw is the minimum sketch. My goodness, the light level has fallen. I'm actually going to switch on the overhead lights because there's nothing much going on outside. So where am I going to go with this project next? Well, I want to put that in the shed, of course, the transmitter. Now, bear in mind, I call that the transmitter, but this can actually receive if we switch on that ACK payload thing. I'll come to that in a later video. So what I want to put on here is a little switch, and I think I'm going to go for the touch sensor switch, the TTP223, I think it's called. So you just press the touch sensor switch. And then on here, I'm going to put one of those relay modules to switch the fan on in my moldy shed. So if I see here, for example, that the uh, relative humidity has got up to 100%, that's the dew point. That's where the water is going to fall out of the air, make everything wet and make things moldy. I shall just press my little touch switch here. Uh, I'm not sure whether to have the touch switch in toggle mode or whether just to have it in uh, momentary mode. I don't know. I'll work that out. And then on here, it'll turn on a relay and that will connect my bilge blower. I'm going to go for a 12 volt bilge blower um, to a sort of small car battery and ventilate the shed and try and dry it out. And then you can watch the humidity fall as the bilge blower sucks new air and of course it wouldn't work terribly well today oh it's got a bit brighter now actually wouldn't work terribly well today because i imagine the humidity out there must be pretty much nigh on 100 percent. so yeah that's the next extension i'm going to have a push button here well a touch switch and a relay on the transmitter now that of course means that the receiver has to send the value of the touch switch back to the transmitter and you can do that with the ack payload so that's what's coming next but for the moment that's my definitive uh, sensor and transmitter somewhere and somewhere else receiver and display definitive cheerio